Today we're going to look at how to make a static progressive MCP joint flexion splint. We start with the basic pattern for a radial bar version of a wrist cock-up splint. Next we want to mold the splint in the proper position for maximal flexion of the MCP joint. Taking into consideration the tenodesis response, it's helpful to place the wrist in slight extension during the initial molding. Next, we're gonna add the dynamic component to the splint. We've made a finger sling using an extra piece of Velcro loop and we have attached some fishing wire to act as the pulley system. Examine the natural cascade finger active flexion to determine the proper positioning for the line guide. Once the location is identified, mark with your fingernail and punch a hole in the corresponding location to apply the line guide. The line guide helps to ensure the proper line of pull and to avoid any lateral rotation when providing the static progressive stretch. Next, a Velcro strip is applied to the proximal end of the splint. This will be the static progressive piece. Here you can see the line guide now that it has been applied to the splint. Next we will apply the finger sling and feed the fishing wire through the line guide. Once fed through the line guide, you can apply a piece of loop velcro to complete the dynamic component of the splint. When instructing the patient on how to don the splint, make sure they understand to place the finger sling at the proximal phalanx to ensure the correct line of pull. Once in position, they can pull on the proximal end where that loop Velcro piece is, down through the line guide as they stay relaxed, and once a mild to moderate stretch is achieved, they can secure the proximal end of the strap to the Velcro strip. An initial wearing schedule for a splint of this type might be anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, 3 to 5 times a day, to achieve maximal gains and range of motion. Thank you, and I hope this was helpful.